Tell us about the 24-7 program. Yeah, the 24-7 internship uh, pretty much started. It was like a combination of a boot camp to discipline them, like you said. Um, it was kind of like a Bible camp, too, at the same time, where they, they memorized scriptures, they uh, learned what being a man or woman of God really meant, and, and they also would participate in different mission trips all over the world. Now, these were young people. In the case of the men, these were 18-year-olds, 18 to 23? Yeah, correct. The, the cutoff was like 23. Most of them would be dressed right out of high school. Um, you know, their parents either went to the church or were somehow affiliated with the church. They had a kid who was graduating high school. They're like, oh, this would be a great opportunity for my son or daughter to, you know, take a year off and learn what it is to be a man or woman of God. That was kind of the the, the plug for now, it. Now, these young men in the 24-7 program, they were put through intense workout every day to mm-hmm. build their bodies and uh, really uh, build them up. You said that um, they were all cut up. And- um, I mean, if you're working out two hours every morning and then on top of that, you're pretty much not eating that much and, you know, constantly on the go, you're going to lose a lot of weight and gain a lot of muscle. And, I mean, they that was kind of like the whole point of them getting disciplined, too. It was kind of like a boot camp. They would shave all their heads. They would make them wear the same clothing, the same outfits. So they would kind of lose their identity and be, you know, more influenced by the leadership of the program. So they were um, put through this. It was really like a military boot camp. Their heads were shaved and that kind of thing, too? Correct, yeah. And Ted would oversee this. Um, he would oversee it with, uh, you know, um, another guy who ran the program. And tell us about Christopher Beard. Um, Christopher Beard was himself a, a struggling homosexual. Um, but this is what I was told by Ted. And, um, I mean, him and Ted would love to go to the gym every morning with all these young guys. And, I mean, unfortunately, it... You know, they they had more pleasure than just meeting these guys while they were, you know, in the locker room, watching them change, watching them shower. So, yeah. Now, Christopher Beard wound up leaving the church uh, in December after um, Ted Haggard's fall from the church, about a month Mm -hmm. after. There were the headlines that Christopher Beard, who worked with young adults at New Life Church, had resigned, admitting sexual misconduct. There was never any discussion of the sex, of the gender, of the sexual misconduct that he was engaging with, correct? Yeah. But, Correct, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know for sure who it was or if it was a male or a female. Um, just from his struggles and his relationship with Ted, I'm assuming it might be. I'm just putting, you know, two pieces of the puzzle together there. Um, but I really never knew. He, Christopher Beard, did some counseling with me while I was actually an intern at the church. Um, when I was a pastoral intern, so I worked, like, in Ted's office doing things for him. And... He would counsel me, you know, he made uh, me write up, like, why homosexuality is wrong, the pros and cons of living a gay lifestyle. He made it very clear to me, like, he was almost defensive about it while he was counseling me. He was almost like, oh, well, I've never struggled with that. I've never had any kind of experience like that. I'm definitely not gay. He's very, you know, defensive, and that kind of struck me as odd. So I've never, like, I've had Christian counselors before who have counseled me on this issue, but I've never had anyone really be really defensive about it. So tell us about how the two of them would uh, work together and, you know, kind of um, oversee this program. I mean, and actually talk about these young boys, too. Yeah, I mean, Christopher, I remember Ted telling me that, you know, they were in the locker room with all these boys changing one day, and... Christopher Beard kind of smiled at him. He's like, oh, my God, I have the best job ever. You know, as they're <laughs> overlooking all these, you know, innocent 18, 19-year-old boys. And it, it was just, they would talk, you know, sexually about these guys. And um, I guess one other incident that happened with them was that day before an executive meeting with Ted Haggard, um, he would always, like, invite me to all these meetings with him and all his staff. And he takes me to his office. He's like, Grant, I want to show you something. 
and he's got this big old grin on his face, and he pulls his book off his shelf. And uh, inside this book is a photo of pretty much all these 24-7 guys um, in his office, completely naked, holding, like, different books over their crotches or, like, different items in his office. And he's just like, oh, wow, I love this. He's like, i got to go show it to the other staff people. They're all going to laugh. And then he found out, I guess, Gail was attending the meeting, his wife. And then he was like, oh, well, I I better not. Gail's here. And he had me go back to his office and put it back in the book. He also showed you a website um, called squirt.org. Yeah. And where it was like a hookup site of some sort. And um, he told you that... um, once there was a posting on there about all of the 24-7 guys uh, going every morning to work out at the 24-hour mm-hmm. fitness gym, basically telling people to go there and check them out. Yeah, he he just thought, he was telling me about the, that, the, the hookup site, that org site, I guess. And I guess on there they have listings of, like, gyms to go to to... I guess, meet guys or whatever. And I guess he told me, yeah, there was a post on there about, oh, you know, come here every morning between this time and this time. There'll be a bunch of, you know, naked 18-year-old boys in the shower that you can watch. Mm. I mean, Now, your friend Will was uh, eventually in that program, the 24-7 program, and he talked about the program. He talked about... Um, what the program was like and what it was like uh, going through it. Uh, talk a little bit about that because he, he talked about the intensity of it and, and what they did. Yeah, it definitely was an intense program. It was hard for him. I think, you know, they would they would make him. Everything was like they'd say it was for a training exercise, like whether they're making the kids run till they throw up, whether they're like, here, we're going to give you a bag of something. You have to eat it no matter what's in it. Um, all these little, like, military-type training exercises. He would tell me, I mean, the the thing that was most um, annoyed, annoying for me was that uh, this Christopher Beard guy kept telling him, you know, don't walk like that, walk like this. Don't talk like that, talk like this. You're, he, like, they wanted to make him physically appear not and, and And Christopher Beard was uh, described himself as struggling with homosexuality as well. So yeah, he would that. teach him how to walk. And he also said that people who are struggling with homosexuality should be uh, naked in front of other men oh, as yeah. much as possible. Correct. He told me that, I mean, that was, I think he told me that when I was in counseling with him. He's like, the reason why we have them naked is that they get used to looking at other males' bodies so they don't feel so uncomfortable, so they don't have anything. They see there's nothing to desire by looking at all these other men, like and, they're the same as you. And Will also told you about um, some of this intensity of the training where they would wake people up in the middle of the night in this program, the 24-7 program, these, mm-hmm. these young men, and put a hood over their heads and take them out into the woods and tie them to a tree? Yeah, they wanted to simulate being kidnapped like while on a mission trip and really prepare them for anything that could happen. Um, Because I know some of the mission trips they did were kind of like, you know, in China or in countries that aren't really friendly towards Christians. Right. You talked about how they were simulating uh, terrorist attacks. Yeah. And simulating Christians coming under attack by terrorists. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was like this whole thing. They they even put on, like, where church members could volunteer and church staff would volunteer, and they would pretty, like... They would, like, replicate, you know, Baghdad or something like that, you know, somewhere in the Middle East. And church members would dress up like merchants, and they would pretty much train the kids how to react in all kinds of different situations they might encounter um, while, in these, while in these countries that aren't really friendly to Christians. And they even had run-ins with the police doing some of this. Yeah, um, there was an incident um, a while back where the police were actually called Someone like called nine one one because there was a whole bunch of people dressed up in the like on a like prairie or whatever and and masks and had you know guns and stuff and they were kind of trying to simulate a terrorist attack like you were saying earlier. 